all these things that I've been bothered about because while there are influencers who are going and educating, but I think the big problem here is that I think a lot of them are also setting the wrong expectations from the market, right? My biggest worry is that are influencers front running less traded derivatives? Financial literacy for the influencers is also quite important. Uh, the the thing which they dole out very freely is something which they need to receive as well. I mean, if India as a country has to grow, the capital markets have to grow. You want people to come invest, trade in the long run. You know, you you don't want people to come and go. See, a lot of people come on um, shows and say that this IPO looks good, that IPO looks good. Now, this is blatantly violating the RA uh, regulations, right? You have to be foolish enough to waste. money on a telegram channel i uh, hopefully it's not uh, you know selling the house and burning that money hello guys and welcome to this podcast uh, a very important one which we are hosting on an extremely critical piece of uh, regulation which has come out from sebi over the last week this is a consultation paper that the regulator has introduced and this consultation paper is on the association of sebi registered intermediaries and regulated entities with unregistered in- entities including finfluencers so this was launched last week and to talk about what this is about and what it means to the financial uh, sector and the community as a whole we have with us sandeep parekh who is like a foremost um, voice in india on the regulations on the financial uh, sector and we have nitin the ceo and founder of zeroda hello sandeep hello nitin Hi. So I'll just uh, give a brief coverage of what the meta is about, and then I'll let Nitin and Sandeep take over uh, this thing to tell us more about what this is about. So basically, the large uh, meta which the regulator has hinted last week is that uh, they are concerned about the financial influencers who are unregulated, who are playing a large role in the industry as of now, and the regulator has said in the paper that uh, they are worried about the fact that influencers are taking incentives. Uh, to sell products services or securities and they are worried that the influencers may not have the requisite expertise to do this and they are also worried that they are not uh, subject to any kind of code of conduct when it comes to what they say or act so therefore they want to curb this and the meta of the paper is that to curb this they attempt to disrupt the revenue model of the influencers uh, which basically means that the paper says that registered entities such as brokers ras ras etc cannot give any kind of incentives whatsoever to influencers for any kind of promotion they also want to make influencers responsible for their actions so they are hinting at some kind of registration and then finally they are trying to make influencers more accountable by giving a complaint link etc etc right so uh, let me just lead it to uh, sandeep sandeep what do you make of this paper what is this all about where is this coming from yeah i i think um... this is coming from a lot of flack sebi has been getting over the past uh, year plus saying that you know you guys are not really uh, taking charge of the securities market the financial markets uh, you are supposed to kind of make sure that you don't have people who kind of uh, you know uh, snake oil uh, uh, sellers who try to uh, sell all kinds of inappropriate products they kind of getting commissions uh, from people they getting money from people that they're not disclosing that and uh, you know they essentially they claim uh, they're uh, educating people but what they're doing is kind of misleading people into wrong investments so i think uh, it's 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 uh, uh, in that backdrop sebi has said okay look we are going to look at it from two angles one is you know we want to protect freedom of speech which of course guaranteed in the constitution uh if i if i talk to nitin or to you about you know let's company x or about even if for the options trading or how it's done etc you know that's that falls within my constitutional right as such uh versus um my responsibility to disclose any conflict of interest and uh let me just spend 30 seconds on kind of probably the oldest case on something like this is a us supreme court case called uh, sec versus capital gains and which look, looked at this topic for the first time ba- lo- long back then uh where a person was kind of uh, making recommendations to purchase or sell stocks 
but just before the recommendations were put out uh, uh to to his kind of customers or investors uh he was buying just slightly you know maybe half a day before that uh and um, uh, sec kind of went after him not for fraud but for kind of breaching his fiduciary duty duty and he his his response uh, all the way to the us supreme court was look uh, this is not biased uh, research i genuinely believe this stock is 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 really good and i'm i'm i'm, I'm saying that uh and the supreme court kind of sided with the sec uh saying that no look uh, with this is not an action for fraud Uh, but uh, you know when when have a relationship like this you really need to disclose your interest uh, be- before you kind of make, make this recommendation particularly given that you are actually trading ahead of uh, of your client in this <clears throat> so i think um, we've had i think in a way a convergence of the ascii standards which of course is uh, not really a regulator today uh, but uh, interesting uh, guidelines have come from there uh, for regulating uh, influencers and i think uh, sebi paper is kind of the starting point and the third thing i think from the enforcement angle would be uh, almost every week if you see sebi website they passing uh, some order against one person or the other for violating uh, either investment advisor regulation providing investment advice uh, without being registered or research analyst uh, regulation so you know i think that's the backdrop uh, of uh, um uh, this this paper maybe we like to add something there yeah no i mean see thing is um as a zerodha we we've, we've been beneficiaries of this again this has been my problem because you know this is uh, you know life is full of contradictions right i mean this is one of these things that i have been bothered about because while there are influencers who are going and educating but i think the big problem here is that i think a lot of them are also setting the wrong expectations from the market right and which is i think the crux of the problem right as in you know this whole it's easy to make money in the market is you know like how you know see how easy i you know how quickly i made this money so you can also do it right i mean as long as someone is setting this wrong expectation i think it's bad for the business in the long run while in the shorter run you know we might benefit you know in terms of uptick in accounts not just zero though you know all the broking community people come to the stock market with the wrong expectations they don't get disappointed and they're not going to be around for the long run as in you know you you want people to come i mean if india as a country has to grow the capital markets have to grow you want people to come invest trade in the long run you know you, you want people to come and go and this has happened many times historically for this country and uh, and that's one of the reasons i think we still as a, such a large country the mark, capital market participation is still shallow right so so i think i I've had this problem right from the start uh, of you know whenever this influencing thing took up right I think especially after covid it's just gone bonkers right as in the number of people going out there and and creating content and making it seem like it's very easy to trade in the markets um uh, and and some of them are doing outright fraud right as in if someone is manipulating the PNL um uh, and and showing it you know it is it's a problem I mean it's uh it's it's a fraud if if someone's manipulating a pin i mean there is no other way around it and one of the reasons i think why you know you guys first started with that verified pnl at sensible and then us extending that was was saying that uh, if someone is putting up a screenshot of a pnl we rather have a verified pnl versus a screenshot because at least then you know uh, someone can't be manipulating the pnl itself um you uh, know you know by using whatever you know some photoshop etc to edit uh, the screenshot um so so yeah so that's the other thing i think uh, uh you know this verified you know according to us at least internally the way we are thinking is if someone's making these false claims there should be some kind of an action taken against him because it's just it's just outright fraud of sorts um so yeah i mean i think the problem for us as a broker you know this is something you know i've highlighted you know we we recently had this q and a running on trading q and a uh, around this is that as a broker the thing is we can't on our own take a stance here because today influencers also wield a lot of power right as in and and us taking a stance can potentially backfire against the business um and whatever you know has to happen has to happen through a regulatory framework of sorts 
And I think this consultation paper is really the right direction, which kind of addresses these problems, right? Is it, which is someone is behaving like a advisor and an analyst. Um, today, I think a lot of people are taking, you know, this whole freedom of speech stance here to say that, you know, I'm, I'm allowed to act like one because I'm not collecting any money from the user directly, but they are indirectly making money, right? As, as in, I mean, a lot of ad revenue, a lot of, you know, like, like commissions, et cetera. I think, I think the consultation paper kind of addresses that. I still don't know how the ad revenue bit will play out. I mean, there's something I wanted to ask Sandeep actually is that, is it okay to, you know, to behave like an advisor analyst uh, and not make any direct money? But what if you're generating ad revenue out of it? Is that, is that okay? As in, uh, because the problem here is the louder you are, the more viewership you get, right? So the, the incentive is always skewed to be loud on social media. And, uh, and if you're, you know, somehow being able to generate ad revenue, I mean, say tomorrow, none of the capital market intermediaries pay any of these influencers. The influencers still can generate a lot of ad revenue. Um, how is that, you know, like, how do you see that playing out? So it was in, uh, this is something I wanted to ask you. you know, no, so I think uh, Sebi has, I think, a neat answer to that, uh, which is, you know, we have one baby which is ours, the other baby is not ours. Which is, uh, you know, the first baby is that they, they will, I think, uh, the idea is to register for influencers, uh, uh, which probably will mean, you know, that they have to, number one, get a registration number from Sebi. And number two, they'll, they'll be accountable to Sebi for uh, not making these disclosures. Which, uh, you know, when I read them along with the ASCII code, which is interesting because it's, it's quite sophisticated. You know, it talks even, uh, it's quite granular. It even talks how many seconds should be the disclosure, etc. So if you if you read these two together, you know, uh, really what Sebi is saying is if, if you're registered, we're okay f for you to kind of associate with uh, people within our domain, you know, brokers, uh, investment advisors, etc. can use influencers. To market their services really um, or or any other affiliations so long as disclosure is made uh, and the other uh, kind of disowned baby is really that uh, you know if you're not registered you know you you can do whatever you want really we we, we can't control you it's freedom of speech uh, people want to kind of even if it's goes to the level of fraud um, if if you know i think sebi's uh, uh, stance seems to be that you know we will uh, we, we will not associate or kind of be responsible for that fraud. You know, you as as an investor, you kind of um, take take ownership of uh, you know people who are not unregistered. Because here we are telling you that we're going to register a handful of them, uh, and you should deal with uh, those influences. Uh, and uh, how SEBI is going to actually kind of give you know whether it gets into something worse than today, I don't know. Because you know then they're getting a badge of honor from SEBI itself that okay you are a registered SEBI influencer and you know the based on the quality of the uh, all the seminars and the training that i've seen online at least uh, again i've <laughs> never paid for any of this but you know again based on what i've seen on twitter etc and it's, it's it's kind of atrocious quality really so most of it doesn't even qualify for uh, educational but you know i think it's it's a byproduct of the free money we have seen over the past uh, two two and a half years uh, and i think the the biggest uh, Teachers going to be people burning, burning their money. And, you know, beyond a point, you know, if somebody wants to throw their money in the ocean, you can't stop them. Uh, so I think that's, that seems to be Sebi's stance. No, no, but does it even come under Sebi's power? For example, see, the thing is, as long, uh, like the consultation paper suggests, as long as this, this person, influencer, whoever is getting paid by a registered Sebi intermediary, at least, you know, they can control that. But if a person, you know, is is not taking is has got no relation directly with the capital market. Does it even come under SEBI's power? As in, can they really do something about it? Yeah. So the answer is yes, and uh, to the extent that if somehow it falls within the definition of investment advice right, uh, or research analysis, then it it could fall within SEBI's domain. And, and as I said, almost every week we're seeing one order coming up from SEBI under both of these regulations. So. If it falls within that, uh, SEBI can and does take action. Uh, but, you know, a last, large majority of that is either, you know, so-called educational material. Uh, some of it is actually generally education. <clears throat> uh, and, and a lot of it is ad revenues, like you said. I, I put out a 
YouTube video on how to trade an option and I'm getting paid from whoever, whoever is paying me for that, etc. So I think uh, both of these would continue to remain outside uh, SEBI's domain, even if, even even to the extent of the uh, fraud occurring. You know, uh, if let's say there's a kind of a manip- manipulated PNL, I, I don't think SEBI wants to intervene. And I think just the quantum of the uh, the bandwidth required to go after each influencers, I think, uh, it is something which is kind of restrained SEBI's hand. Is is my guess. Got it. And on on this RA RA, please, I, I had one last question. Uh, if if a if a person you know say, this is my understanding right is that if there is any commercial arrangement is really when you need to be registered uh, is that understanding right as in for example uh, I am telling you what stock to buy but I'm not charging you a fees for this I'm just doing it as you know freedom of speech or out of free will so yeah it considered as an RIA if I have, there's no commercial uh, arrangement in place I mean same thing with RAs as well as in yeah, so the answer is different for RAs and RIAs. For RIAs, you know, the definition of investment advice is somebody who does something for consideration. Uh, but when you look at the definition of investment advisor, it, it, it says, you know, it could be either be a person who's uh, giving an investment advice for consideration or putting himself out, you know, uh, as an investment advisor. So even if it's without consideration, but you kind of hold yourself out, you know, this kind of a bit of a technical legal term. Uh, essentially means that you put up your board saying that I am an investment advisor, I'm providing these services. Then even without consideration, you'll fall within uh, investment advisor. Uh, research and analyst actually has no requirement of uh, consideration. So, you know, it's it's much broader, really. Uh, and, and therefore, you know, anybody who provides uh, kind of a research report would fall, you know, within the prohibition of which is kind of the requirement of registration and uh, you know if you provide research analysis without registration you you could get in trouble so then how how is everyone today doing it doesn't because you know like everyone's putting out a view on social media everyone's putting out uh you know getting on tv channels and giving uh, recommendations i mean how, do, how 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 is that working without any registration then so, um, so for investment advice, I think uh, so I, I, there are three categories. One is you're registered as an investment advisor, and therefore, you know, it's what your all your disclosures. You can go ahead and make recommendations. Second is there are certain intermediaries like stock brokers, uh, portfolio managers, etc., who have been given an uh, exemption, including dis- distributors. They have an exemption, incidental exemption, so they can come on uh, channels and talk about it. Um, and then third category is really kind of uh, the one which we are talking about, which is uh, unregistered people who kind of coming in and giving yarn on uh, spe- either it's specific companies or if they talk about generic stuff, it's probably okay. Uh, they'll probably fall within the educational exemption. But uh, a lot of the people who are kind of giving uh, specific investment advice on uh, stocks, for instance, uh, would 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 fall within the prohibition of uh, you know providing advice without registration. So I think, uh, as I said, you know, the, 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 the numbers are too large for SEBI to kind of manage. So, which is why you don't see as many orders as uh, you, you'd want, want to see. Uh, and, you know, again, at some point, it will clash with freedom of speech. Uh, uh, you know, again, the dividing line is not always very clear, you know, where freedom of speech ends and uh, where reasonable restriction actually begins. So I think there's one more thing, uh, Nitin, that uh, so we are an RA and we follow the RA code very extensively, right? So the RA uh, regulations of 2014 clearly say one thing. So if I were to opine about the general direction of the index or the broader markets, then I don't need any license for that. So basically, if I'm going out there and saying, I think Nifty will go up or all IT sector stocks will go up or Bank Nifty will go down, then I don't need anything. Like I'm a, I'm just a person with a mic and a camera. I can go on YouTube and say that. The catch comes in when I say SBIN, nice price to buy at 231. Or if I say Nifty 19,500 call, decent to buy. So if it's a specific instrument like an Nifty call or a Bank Nifty put or an SBA stock, that requires an RA regulation even for me to say that this looks good, this looks nice, right? But if I'm just saying Nifty looks good or Indian banks are attractive or all the Indian IT companies might have a bad time next year, then it doesn't look great. The point is that this entire thing is so hazy that most people, including the you know people inside the industry, are not entirely aware that there is a differentiation between broad sectoral views and specific instrumental views. So in that gray area, a lot of people go on YouTube. And like Sandeep pointed out, the regulator can't go 
you know, behind every single person in Jubri Talaya and ask, boss, what did you say last week? So I think that gray area plus the fact that enforcement is difficult is what is really making people say, keep by Bank Nifty call today. I think that's one area to look into. Yeah, just so just to add, I think uh, so. I think I should have mentioned that very clearly. I think you already pointed that out. That uh, research analyst regulations does talk about you know uh, these exemptions for uh, general advice with respect to the markets, etc. So I think it's 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 uh, reasonably well understood. I would say in uh, within the, you know the sophisticated and limited market of registered uh, research analysts. But I don't think most people outside that community understand uh, how how that goes, and therefore they they dabble in both. Yes, yes, is, Sandeep uh, gets it. Course. I get it. Nitin gets it. But people don't. So they, <laughs> so they can't even go to Sebi and complain. Boss, this guy asked me to buy Bank Nifty last week. Yeah. Got it. What? Yeah. So I'll be over you. I mean, any any other question? So one of the things uh, which I want to understand from Nitin, especially, is uh, how bad is this thing anyway? How? How how much of a scale are we looking at? How truly gone is the system? It's really hard to put a number to this. So uh, at zero, the you know, ten between ten to fifteen percent of a new business comes through referrals. Oh, that's it. So that's that's not that's not significant. It's not. It's not. I mean, in the sense, this is accounted for, right? As in, that means this comes through a referral link, and this also includes. Uh, you know, we have tens of thousands of customers who use these referral links to. So the influencer piece is, you know, is maybe five percent, like half of that. You know, and and the rest of the piece is really, you know, customer referring each other. Now I don't. But I think the paper is clear on that. Paper is saying that a limited number of retail client referrals are okay. The consultation paper says that. Yeah. No, but the question here is, how do you define? Uh, a retail customer and a influence because everyone today has a social media account mm-hmm. and everyone's saying something about the market and are potentially uh, you know sharing these affiliate links etc so how do you like how do you define who's an influencer who's a customer uh, is it based on a certain audience because i think there's one regulation from before which says if you have more than a million you know like uh, followers you are a celebrity and a broker is not allowed to associate with a celebrity Right. Uh, so will 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 Sebi come up with a number like that? Do you think, uh, Sandeep? Because in uh, who is a influencer? Is it? Yeah, most likely they would because actually this this the paper is actually very very sketchy and you know it's quite uh, grammatically also quite dense. You know, for instance, it's used the word limited referral. I have no idea what that means. So it's got a lot of phrases which are not not very clear and it's just very very brief. Just touches on the topic. So I either kind of. Uh, they are not very clear at this stage, uh, but they will have to obviously come out with a very detailed uh, circular on what they, what are the definitions, who is, who is going to fall foul, uh, and uh, you know, uh, not everybody understands that they need to be registered to provide investment advice or research analysis. So I think a bit of kind of uh, financial literacy for the influencers is also uh, quite important. Uh, the, the thing which they dole out very freely is something which they need to receive as well. Uh, but broadly, you know, I think uh, no, Sebi. I think my my uh, the mantra which I I put in my book also is that uh, Sebi is, Sebi sees this role as somebody who removes ignorance from the market and not stupidity. And you know, this distinction is really important because uh, you know beyond a point, if somebody like I said wants to throw their money on the ocean, and Sebi is not going to come and stop them. Uh, so if people are taking absurd advice, people are taking advice from unregistered people when they know they should be working only with registered people. Um, you know, beyond a point, Sebi is not really going to care. Uh, and uh, this also comes from the bandwidth issue, which which I mentioned. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I want to. Uh, you're on mute. So I want to ask uh, uh, you a question. Now you yeah. interact with a lot of traders as well. How big do you think that problem is? Because you are actually. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you are the one who is doing a lot more of this. Uh, you know, interacting through uh, you know your uh, YouTube channel. So, how big do you think hey, this is? I think this is horrible. I'll I'll tell you why. Because I think this is way way bigger a problem, especially when it comes to derivatives than anything else. And there are three major problems which I have a concern with. Right. See, number one is that. So I have once noticed. Uh, that, so I follow a lot of. Uh, I shadow follow a lot of Telegram groups in India. 
without letting them know that it is me so one of these days i noticed something that there was a option of a uh, a uh, smaller capital stock which i think it was ihcl indian hotels and there was an atm option which was trading at some price now in that particular group a call came asking people to buy ihcl options of a particular strike and this was not a very liquid strike see first of all even ihcl the atm option is not very liquid we are talking about a less traded option now after the call came the option price moved more than the stock price whereas theoretically an option price can never move more than an op because the option is always a percentage of the stock price an atm option can only theoretically move 50% of the stock price but the call given in that telegram group of over some 50000 people was so big that they moved the option price more than the theoretical value and somebody benefited from it right and and now my problem is this my biggest worry is that are influencers front running less traded derivatives because on iscl i think the lot size at that time was 2000 uh, per uh, lot and if somebody captured 2 rupees on a single lot that's 4k 10 people make this mistake the influencer actually made 40k on a call the second problem i'm worried about is see a lot of people come on um, shows and say that this ipo looks good that ipo looks good now this is blatantly violating the ra uh, regulations right uh, even ra regulations for that reason now the problem is there's no way you can prove that the influencer might not have taken a financial incentive from the promoter of the company to say that look boss please peddle this to some retail investors i want a nice exit right uh, the third thing which of course i am worried is that see there is a possibility that somebody who owns a large enough telegram group let's say 100000 people there are several telegram groups in india which have 100000 people plus none of which have an ra regulation how do i know that they are not market making basically they are not putting the bid and offer for something they are giving calls in so i can say that okay buy this option at x price and put the offer in you know market and then later i can say that okay stop loss time please get out at this price i can make the bid also so because of this front running pump and dump and the whole ipo peddling issue i i really really am worried that this is a much bigger problem because i have not seen a single registered analyst or an ria who has 100000 people reach but i really can't count how many people i know who run telegram channels or youtube channels with 3 million 4 million kind of reach this is the problem sandeep now for this telegram group issue right uh, uh, no it is potentially the person who's running is not even of influencer right as in it could just be an anonymous person how do you yeah. even- this problem as in it's almost impossible isn't it yeah i i think it's impossible and you know i think only i think only part of the answer is really um uh, investor education that you know the free money doesn't exist in the world uh part of it i think the learning has to be learned first hand you know you have to be foolish enough to waste money on a telegram channel i uh, hopefully it's not uh, you know selling the house and burning that money uh, but you know beyond a point uh, it's it's very very hard to kind of prevent stupidity uh, and you know i am being blunt about it but it's kind of if you think that there is free money available anywhere in the world uh, i think you you have to be pretty deluded whether it's coming from a telegram channel or whether somebody find the 100 rupee note on the on, on the road are they going to give it to you or are they going to keep it themselves is the question you would ask before you know kind of following these guaranteed strategies uh, of of making money and you know uh, whether they pump and dump or whether there are other forms of uh, manipulation you know almost all of them are guaranteed to be that uh, if somebody really knows how to make money why would they share, share it with somebody it's kind of uh, logic 101 right uh, so Uh, you know by definition almost all of them are kind of uh, either either snake oil or or they are just outright frauds um you know there is a bit of education involved so i don't want to diss every single one of them uh, but uh, you know you you could you could learn maybe you could learn options trading but you know you can probably kind of uh, make what what in economics is called rent i don't think you can make profits out of it but you can probably kind of make small amounts of money uh, here and there um of course given the risk but so i think uh, overall i think a large, large part has to do with uh, number one investor education and number two just uh, you know uh, the the whole regime of free money ending in the western world uh, and i think that's percolated down to india as well and people have kind of uh, you know look, looked at uh, all the meme stock mania in the west and they've got they thought that you know you can make free money in india as well and you know uh, Uh, the, the fact is statistically as as you've been pointing out you know i probably 
seen uh, more than 20 posts of yours talking about uh, the SEBI paper. Uh, you know, beyond a point, you know, even I'm sure even you get tired of <laughs> telling people that, okay, this is the, these are the official numbers. Uh, it's in our interest to kind of not tell you this, but we're telling you this nonetheless. So, you know, beyond a point, you know, how, 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 how does SEBI or how, how do, how does Nitin kind of tackle uh, a problem like this? Yeah. No, I think, you know, like I, you know, we've thought about it quite a bit. I think the right time to teach about all of these basic money lessons is maybe even before you start making money, you know, like I, like this is something that we've been, you know, every opportunity I get, you know, we've been trying to say that you need to introduce a little bit of finance in schools and colleges. Because once you, you know, you have fear and greed and all your money biases take over you, right? As in, it's very hard, you know, to change your, the way you think about money. As in, um, but yeah, but you're right. As in, I think more people have to come out there and talk about how there is no easy money out there. <laughs> so. Just one question on the reverse side of the argument. See, you were initially saying, Nathan, right, that uh, all the expansion of financial markets, uh, that's something which is very critical in growing an economy and making people more inclusive in this whole financial sector because there's no financial inclusion in India. Let's face it, right? How many people actually invest in stock markets? And if you generally look at any country, the growth in capital markets is an essentially driver of bringing capital to companies and you know getting them growth. Now, the point is, before influencers, see, we can say everything that we want against them now that this is out. The truth is that nobody probably has had the scale or reach of some of these names before they were there to educate the common man or woman in India to come to financial markets. They have given much more, you know, an intro. Like, see, I, I agree that some of the people might have started investing through them and lost money in a market which went up 100%. Some people might have 30% portfolio down, but it doesn't, uh, doesn't deny the fact that uh, most of the people who made their first DMAT account transaction after COVID probably did it because they listened to a YouTube video, right? So wouldn't you think that uh, a step like this to make influencer, influ influencers extremely regulated, right? Uh, wouldn't you think that it might just be a step back in uh, popularizing financial markets? See, the thing is, okay, so firstly, uh, and I, I've been saying this as well, a lot of people think India is all options trading. It isn't, you know, in the last year, I think there were 40 lakh people who traded on options once in the last year. And there were almost two crore Indians who traded in stocks. Right. So, you know, in a way, options trading, while it contributes to 80 plus percent of exchange turnover, it comes only really from 20 percent of active, you know, population out there. So, uh, so it isn't, like I said, this whole option trading is a problem, but it's not as widespread as people think of it to be. Right. Uh, and, and you're right. As in, uh, I think if whatever growth we've had in the capital market participation in the last two, three years, would it have happened if not for, a lot of people going out there and talking about it in social media, unlikely, right? As in, and you know, I think what ha, what would have otherwise taken maybe five, six years has happened in the last two, three years. As in, you know, just the growth of the capital markets. I think, I think the only, like I said, the only problem I've had with the whole influencing Janta has been setting wrong expectations. As long as you know they can correct that. I mean, we need this. As in, we need you know people to be going and talking about. You know, why people should be investing in stock markets and, and etc. The only thing I think we should try to figure a way is to is to you know kind of have some framework where the expectations are set right, which is that there is no easy money to be made in the market because if the expectation is not set right, like I said earlier, people will come and go. As in you know like why we've seen a lot of growth, you know one little drawdown in the market and they'll all disappear because uh, you know in in that way. It is good for the shorter run, but not good for the longer run. And we need to kind of do what is right for the longer run for the markets. And which is people come to the markets with the right expectation. And uh, and then, you know, everyone's going to stick around. Uh, that's what we need uh, you know, as, a, as an Indian capital market. So, yeah, so we need some regulatory framework, but uh, but it can't be it can't be such a way that no one on, no one in India can't talk about, you know, like stock markets at all. Right? As in, it can't be that as well. Mm. And we, it can't be like yeah. an experiment to it. And, but I think the consultation paper, I think what it's trying to do is to kind of remove some of these incentives, uh, which potentially are conflicted, right? Is that should have influencer be generating commissions from whatever is talking? Maybe not, right? Because like what Munger says, show me the incentive, I'll show the outcome. You know, maybe, 
that that removing that incentive is not probably a bad thing you know uh, for this to you know at least you know like kind of exist in a in a format that we we all yeah. think we fit in the long run so no but but for sure we need we need influencers we need people who go out and talk about markets educate and all of that i mean there is there is no doubt about it at all and and yeah, so I'll, I'll, this? I'll, sorry, let me sorry, take a sorry, stab at this oh. yeah no so so i think uh, uh, you know in the past 30 years this is probably the first time i have seen where uh, you know you had a huge uh, foreign investor outflow around 6 8 months back and the indian markets are pretty stable because you saw a huge amount of retail and dii uh, investments happening at the same time so we we really never saw the crash which uh, most of the western world saw 6 months back or 7 months back so i think a lot of credit needs to go to domestic investors how much of that is coming from influencers uh, from influencers really is you know i don't know if how much is causation how much is correlation but uh, i i would think at least uh, we should give them a little bit of credit at least uh, uh, if 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 not not more to to kind of bring in you know this whole uh, capital markets outlook uh, you know the i think i think broadly they need to learn two things one is diversification the other is kind of the magic of compounding uh, i don't think most people need to know too many other things uh, but uh, you know i think a lot of uh, the stuff that we see on social media focuses on the short term on the Uh, intraday trades and 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 kind of uh, other stuff so i think uh, if people realize the difference between good and bad in terms of taking away uh, uh, the the good which is you know long term in you know uh, equity risk can be can be really good for your portfolio uh, versus you know people trying to make money in 24 hours but uh, one more thing way which i wanted to understand is see sebi can regulate everybody who is in india as an intermediary right all brokers are as are as everything is covered but then there's a key part of this which is the influencers are not exactly operating only in regulated markets i mean how many times have we heard a crypto company going belly up or investors losing money in this and effectively the indian regulators uh, capital market regulators at least have no say in crypto so what if what if this particular regulation causes an exodus of all the existing uh, influencers on mass to something like crypto or betting on horses or who knows what people can bet on right what if it comes back as something much much uh, more problematic what do you think of that no so i'll go first okay no so i think uh, so yeah uh, so no so i think uh, it is is it something which is uh, people have to <laughs> learn the hard way like i said people have to first throw their money in the ocean to realize it's not going to come back Uh, so you know people can invest in meme stocks nfts uh, crypto etc uh, and you know again crypto is not one uh, undefined mass there are kind of relatively better uh, opportunities within that like bitcoin and lot of what they call all kinds of old coins or shit coins so i think uh, this people will have to learn it the hard way i don't think there's uh, an an easy way beyond you know invest education to teach them about just these two simple concepts which i just mentioned so um people will kind of uh, get into excesses people you know we've probably lived in the biggest bubble in our lifetimes uh and you know that is slowly bursting it's still not burst uh, but it is deflating for sure uh, so i think um, people will have to learn the hard way that's it that's it yeah no i, I think you know if you look around uh, i think i'll Gov- I don't know if it's good, not good, but you need to say that our government is also acting on it, right? Like, you know, all of these, you know, taxes that got introduced for crypto or gaming, etc., right? As in, uh, or you know, people who are moving money out of India to invest using CFD platforms or CFD platforms within. You now, RBI has put up a list of all CFD platforms saying that if you trade on this, it becomes a FEMA violation. So you know, uh, just just for our users for clarity, by CF CFD you mean contract for difference, which is basically trading in uh, all these foreign currencies like pound and sterling, and then all these forex trading platform ads, which we keep saying you're talking about essentially that, right? Correct. Yeah. So you know, so RBI has put up a you know bunch of forty fifty platforms saying that if anyone trades on it, it's a FEMA violation. Uh, so in a way, you know, can this business suddenly because you know there are restrictions on influencers here move to some other asset class at least in the ones that can move to there is already some regulations and taxation etc that has been put uh, you know so it can't happen now can it be something new like you said 
horse racing or something. I, mean, I don't know. I mean, like, uh, can something new mushroom? It it will. But if you look at how government's been reacting, hopefully we'll have, you know, very quickly someone who's going to get up and plug that hole in us. Sandeep Nitin, would you like to add any closing words to this? Yeah, so I think I think uh, at some point investors will have to figure that there is a there is a kind of registered and protected world, uh, and there's the wild west out there, and I think they'll have to be discerning and differentiate between the two and know that you know there is accountability etc. within the world which SEBI regulates. Uh, I would think that you know even if this paper were to come to fruition. It will probably apply to 0.001 percent of all influencers, and not to not to everybody. So you know, uh, at the end of the day, I think uh, investment investor uh, discernment will will be key for uh, protect protecting their assets. And you know, uh, we've seen uh, you know you know five five lakhs per investor uh, losses. Actually, quite a large massive amount. Actually, if you think of uh, the the average investment which 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 people make. So I think. Uh, I hope this uh, better sense uh, prevails. People learn the easy but uh, in a way difficult uh, education and investment, which is it's it's, it's long term and it's, it it needs to uh, go through particular uh, you know go through particular re- registered intermediaries for it to be relatively safe. Uh, so once till till people kind of either learn it the hard way or people learn it from. Uh, investor education, I think uh, 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 SEBI will have a limited role to play. No, I mean, I really like the Sandeep's quote on SEBI's job is to kind of remove ignorance and not stupidity. You know? So, and uh, it's actually true as in I've used every opportunity as I've been trading in the market for 25 years now, you know, as in now as a Roda, but before as an individual trader. And I've always been involved in some way, interacting with trader, building communities, etc. So, and I can, one thing that I use every opportunity to talk about is that it's really, really hard to be an active trader and make money, right? As in, uh, it's it's really the hardest place in the world to make easy money. Uh, because I, I know I sometimes even say that it's easier probably making money buying lottery tickets versus trading the markets because you know when you if you buy a lottery ticket you have a large outcome you're not gonna go use that all that money to buy more lottery tickets right as in you will probably go do something with it but in trading you know you, even if you had a large outcome and you made it in the wrong way you probably give it all back to the markets because uh, you know you're not gonna stop trading uh, when you have a large outcome right so. Uh, so yeah, I think I think people need to just internalize that, as in there is no other way around this. Uh, should everyone trade the markets? I'm a little conflicted as a broker, but I think people should give a shot at learning, you know, uh, uh, trading because you know it teaches you, you know, like money lessons like no other book in life can teach you. It will teach you a way to you know understand yourself and how you behave under fear, greed, and all of that. And, and this lesson is very important. You know, if today I'm a decent businessman, I think I'll give you a lot of credit for it for my trading experience because I think I've learned more about myself trading the market than any other book could have taught me. Right. So, so there are, there are a lot of you know upsides by trading the market, but I think the most important thing about trading is to quickly realize if it's meant for you or not. As in, uh, because I, I think a lot of people get carried away and try to throw good money at bad money. I think the biggest trade of trading is really to stop trading, right? It's, it's no when to, you know, like give it a shot, doesn't work, have a time stop or a money stop and say, you know, and and, and don't do it after that. And, um, and I think anyone who claims that it's easy to make money trading the market, he's bad influence, just stay away from that person, you know. As well, or he's good at Photoshop. <laughs> yeah, he's good at Photoshop. You know? So, uh, uh, yeah, like I, I don't, I can't think of too many people who have consistently made money trading who talk about it publicly, right? I said, yep. you know, I mean, I haven't come across anyone, you know. So, like, because people who trade, men, you know, make money, you know, good money, they usually like to be private, you know, they're be very, they're very fearful about, uh, you know, telling strategies that are making money to. You know, someone else. You know, it doesn't work like that, right? Uh, so, so yeah. So, I mean, yeah. I think, I think, I think this. That's it. I mean, uh, the only the crux of the problem is wrong expectation from the market. I think, and and the only way to solve for this is eventually is to avoid stupidity and getting carried away. Uh, you know, assuming that it's easy to make money. You know, so. 
So as it always goes, buy a beware, I guess. So thank you so much, Nitin and Sandeep, for joining this. I hope this is as useful for everybody who uh, watched it and as much fun as it has been for us. Thank you, people.